Well, speaking of serendipitous Sorry. coincidences, uh, while I was talking to Grant, who was a fan of Battlestar Galactica, we met Kevin Grazier, who was the science advisor for that and many more. And many more. I was science advisor on Eureka as well, Battlestar Galactica, Blood and Chrome, Gravity, uh, currently on Defiance, and a few other things that I'm uh, contractually obliged not to talk about. We'll talk later. <laughs> so, I want to know what goes into um, science advisory, because I know you, you have a specific, you might have a specific point to make, like that would never happen. Or, do they generally listen to you or go ahead with what they want anyway? Any question you have about being a science advisor is show dependent, and often it's even writer dependent. I mean, Battlestar, yes, they listen to me. Um, you know, I actually don't have really many complaints about any show that I worked on, but you know, but Battlestar was a very different job than on, say, Eureka. Whereas, you know, Battlestar, we are chronicling the lives of people who live in a high-tech environment, and so science wasn't ever a big deal. It was not a main component on many stories. Some, not many. Eureka, for example, science is a character on that show, so science is a little much more integral to the plot, and 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 therefore there's a lot more advice probably to be given in, in say, Eureka. Um, and again, other shows are just different. Defiance is, is, is yet again different. Um, science is a component, but in a much more understated way. We have these huge um, documents and, and databases about the science behind Defiance. Again, very different job. And did I answer your question? Sort of, kind of. Like, do they, I'm wondering if they, they listen to you or if maybe they have a plot point they just really, really want to keep, but it's just not scientific at all, logically. You know, I... Um, on Defiance, that's the most recent example, there have been two episodes, one from season one and one from season two, where they've gone through extreme measures to incorporate science. So absolutely they listen to me. Some of those the small niggly points, sometimes not, sometimes it, you know, but, but some, on some big major points, yes, they do. Um, and on, maybe I want to speak about gravity, but maybe in general, are there any specific points that you really, really fought for? Uh, that may or may not have made it to the final product. No, um, there really was nothing to fight for because when I sat down with the Quarones, and I say that in plural because Jonas Quaron, Alfonso's son, co-wrote the screenplay. We first sat down, we sat down for three or four hours, and you know, I mentioned, like, like one of the, the complaints was that, well, you can't get down to the International Space Station from the Hubble um, orbit. And the fact is they knew that. Um, but if you don't give our characters something to shoot for, that's a very different film. And they were motivated to do this film by the IMAX film of the Hubble servicing mission. So they wanted to have uh, a movie that shows the grandeur and the danger of a mission like that. And so they, they, that's the one, I'd say, biggest issue they knew going in. That was a filmmaker's choice. Everything else was just mild tweaks. All right, fair enough. So in all the lexicon of sci-fi, not even with something that you've worked on in particular, what would you say is the worst offender to science and science fiction? Armageddon. <laughs> Tell me more. Came right out. No, um, I think a lot of science scientists um, had issues with the science depicted in that film. It was an exciting film, but not a whole lot of science. More fiction than science. Are you saying that gun should not have been maybe a threat as much as it was, maybe a ragtag group of miners was not the best choice to send into space. I, you know, an example. In the first minute, you have Charlton Heston in his best God has smote the voice. It hit with the force of 10,000 nuclear weapons. And they talk about the impact that killed the dinosaurs, right? It actually, if they'd had a science advisor, they'd realize it was like 185 times that much. And so if they'd had a science advisor, they would have had greater dramatic impact. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, and it just, it just there, there was a whole lot of just cringeworthy moments if you're a scientist and you, you like accurate science in film. Is there a TV show or movie that you think really gets it right? Battlestar Galactica gets it right, of course. What do you mean? How dare you? Sorry. Oh, yes, that? yes, yes. Battlestar Galactica, always, always, forever. Now, we, we did a lot of things right that we even caught, got um, heck from, from the fans. We got, we got grief from, from the fans. 
by being the first people to do it right. And, and for 40 years, people doing things incorrectly, like people exposed to space, oh, they'd freeze or they'd pop. No, they wouldn't. You've just been watching somebody doing it badly for 40 years. We did it right, and so you're not, not used to that. Things like that. So there's, things, there's a few things we got grief on that we actually did correctly. So on the subject of Battlestar Galactica, oh, there's a new movie coming out. Thoughts? There was a new movie that's been announced. There have been several new movies announced in the past few years. Um, if it makes it to the screen, you know, we'll see. My thoughts, you know, um, I was at a, a convention called Galacticon oh, several years ago now where Ron Moore was presenting the new Galactica to a very hostile audience. Um, he was not treated well at that convention and it ended up being a raging success, and I'm sure he converted almost everybody who, who saw his initial panel. So it'd be more than a little hypocritical if I said, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be horrible, it's gonna be bad, it's too early. So, you know, give him a chance, but, but you know, give him a chance. All right, well, we'll look for that real soon, or not, because maybe it won't make it to the screens. Well, a lot of things get announced and just don't quite make it there, so we'll see. I'm just saying that's a brand that a lot of people identify with and like. I think there's a good shot it'll make it. I don't so know. So say we all. So say we all. And with that, thank you very much, Kevin, thank for you. sitting down and talking to me for a second. I know you got to run and you got to go have meet your rats named by David Peterson from. Yes, I've got a couple of rats named by David Peterson, who's our language expert on, on defiance. I have white rats. They look like castathans. He gave me castathan names. Nothing in Dothraki or High Valerian, but still. Not yet. We're working on that. <laughs> All right, it's been a pleasure, Kevin.